uh, as a dungeon master, it's an, a, another really important thing always is be willing. You're always going to write a bunch of plot, like we've said, and I'm going to be honest, you're, you're, you'll get to maybe 20% of it. Yeah. This is how it's going to be. Or, and what I adore is when my plot is rejected. This may sound very counterintuitive, but nothing I love. I love the chaos. I'd love it. Like if I made a town so dislikable that no one wants to save it, that's hilarious to me that they will wipe away all that work. I don't know why. Cause I don't see that as a loss. Now I have to really improv because yeah, I made an unlikable town. No one wants to save it. Like that's a great character choice. I mean, it's dark, but yeah. Like at some point you're like, why am I helping this side? Like, what am I doing? It's a great lesson for dungeon masters that be willing to throw everything you've done away in the service of freedom and getting to, and freedom and fun. And both are pretty much intimately connected because this is not a novel that you're writing by yourself. This is not a movie. This is not a TV show. This is your friends getting together and forming a story together and just like being in an open world video game, that that sense of being able to know that your dungeon master will let you set sail across the sea and become pirates for no reason is fantastic because that's what you can be as a dungeon master. You can be this massive CPU for every, everybody that allows them to do anything. There's no other format like that in the world. I will... 100% agree with that. And then for all of you brand new DMs out there who are going, oh, that sounds terrifying. I, I'm going to offer two quick suggestions. First, remember, remember once again, your players want you to have fun. And so when that moment happens and where they want to do something that you didn't plan for and you have no idea what to do next, it's okay to take a moment, especially if you've been playing for a while. That's the perfect time for a break. Yeah perfect time for some snacks and if you've been playing for two hours take a pause there and yeah this was supposed to be a one shot but you know what we're having so much fun and now and just tell them you you've done something i didn't expect and so you know what let's let's put a pin in this let's find a time that we can get together and do the second half of this so i can have some time to prepare because that sounds awesome just go ahead and tell people because why not why not roll with what they've got uh but yeah don't be afraid to say can we take five minutes for a break. I think I need some new pizza and to go sit in the bathroom for a second and figure out what to do next. It's okay. <laughs> It'll be fine. Um, let me pull some more questions from chat. Um, maybe slightly off topic, but how do you feel about DM suggesting something when the party is stuck, such as saying there are vines to climb when they're falling there, when they're failing their climbing checks. Happens um, all the time. Yeah. Uh, not, 100%. Not, not like, I mean, hint, don't be like, or you could do, I mean, I, t I don't typically like that and it will come up sometimes, but allowing some, someone to do a skill check, right? That maybe they didn't think to ask, just ask them for it. And then if they get it, great. You know, um, you know, if it's high enough and stuff like that, and then you can, you know, lead them a little bit out, out. This happens a lot in dungeons and I am not it depends on the dungeon. I typically don't like dungeon crawls unless they're very populated with NPCs, different kinds of monsters, different kind of interactions. I like role playing. Role playing is the thing I love the most. Combat, not so. Much. I mean, I, lo I love killing things really quick. Um, so I, I tend towards assassins or big burst damage, and then then it's someone else's turn. I like to yeah. move things along very fast. So. I 100% agree with skill checks. Uh, and if you are worried that you're going to ask for, hey, give me a perception check and they're going to fail and they're still going to be stuck, take a look at everybody's either passive uh, investigation and perception, find the person who has the highest and just give them some information or find people who are trained in the skill that you need and just give them the information because that doesn't feel like you're giving them information that feels like, oh, my character's really good at perception and I've got the best perception of the group and that's why I noticed this. Oh, I'm trained in Arcana. And so of course I would understand that blah, 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 blah. So if they get stuck uh, or if you feel like they're floundering on where to go next, definitely you know, ask for some checks or just give certain players information based on what their characters are good at. I 100% I agree. That, that also comes to like if a player is being quiet or is afraid to role play or 
whatever, like that they're not used to being out there as much or they're quieter than the rest of the group. Asking them for a skill check is great way to reinsert them into that narrative um, and get them talking again. Uh, same goes for look at your players' backgrounds. Backgrounds are weirdly powerful, especially narratively, because they give you like not only skills and some t- and, and tools, but really look at what you're allowed to get away with. Like pirates, for example, if you take the pirate background, you can walk into a bar and take someone else's drink and generally people will not stop you, which is a very weird <laughs> background trait, but that defines kind of the narrative there. And yeah. that's really fun. Look at those backgrounds. Um, it's a great way to get people not only making an excuse for why they would know something beyond just arcana checks and stuff like that, but also how they interact with their, their world. And uh, there will be some players who want to just sit back and be a little bit more passive and they're still having tons of fun. And it can be hard to tell the difference between the player who just wants to observe and, and throw in stuff here and there. And the player who's feeling overwhelmed or feeling like everybody's talking over them. Don't be afraid to call on those people. And then accept if they just kind of give you the bare minimum, that might just mean they're not comfortable yet. That might just mean they're, they're having fun and they, they would rather just kind of watch the chaos unfold. Um, if you don't want to ask for a skill check, the other thing that I like to do, especially with new players, um, if I, if I feel like they could use a prompting ask, Hey, what's your character thinking about in this moment about this thing? That's fine. You know, Hey, yeah. you just, you just been given the, the keys to this new tavern. Uh, what's, what's your character thinking about right now? How do they feel in this moment? Oh, you, you failed to catch your friend and now they took this damage. How are you feeling right now? That right. can be powerful to a player. Uh, because it gives them license to talk a little bit about themselves, which all of us like to do. It also gives you as the DM a lot of insight into what they're thinking about, not just the character, but their player. And also if you as the DM need 10 seconds to think about what to do next, that's a great way to buy yourself 10 seconds that everybody's going to love. Just make sure you pass that love around to all of the players so they all feel like they're getting that love. Um, Any thoughts on co-DMing as a way to start DMing? I've never co-DM'd. Uh, I've got some good friends at D4 who co-DM and love it. Um, I don't think it's a bad idea, but you might want to um, you might want to go looking into some strategies for how to co-DM uh, just just in case because it can unless you're really prepared, it can be a lot of stepping on each other's toes. Um, but I I think co-DMs are awesome. I uh, I did it once because. Everyone was back in town. I had been running a three-year Star Wars campaign and everyone was back in town. It was Christmas and we called it the Christmas episode because we had 14 players. And it was a five-hour session and I assigned two of the players who sometimes would DM to be co-DMs in the fact that they would handle combat, which was perfect because one group would suddenly get into combat and another would be role playing, trying to do something else, and so I could easily move between the two with the help of another DM uh, managing combat, like because combat is combat. Mm. So they're not going to change the narrative um, on me, or I can give them like I gave them loose guidelines. It turned out to be one of the most fun games we've ever played, and I would not recommend doing it. Um, I almost dropped to the ground from my brain just overheating and melting. But it was preposterous. It was probably the most Farscape-like adventure I've ever run. Uh, someone was playing someone else's father. They, <laughs> that father was killed by another player. The son was very upset. Like an Imperial Star Destroyer was destroyed. Uh, someone ran over an evil Jedi with their ship. Like it was bonkers. Guardians of the Galaxy weird. Um, and I, I will always remember that fondly. I don't know that I would ever do it again. (laughs) We probably would not recommend it for new DMs, but definitely. (laughs) But if you got a really good friend or maybe if you know someone who has been an experienced player or DM and you want to get into it and they're going to, they're going to help you. eh, Maybe that's the way to go. We have a, 
billion awesome questions from chat. I can't, we are not going to be able to get to them all. I'm kind of trying to pick the ones that are, are specific for new DMs, like brand new, never played, never DM'd DMs. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of these questions, I'll just say in advance, come to our forums, come to our Discord. We've got a lot of people who would be more than happy to give you some advice, send you uh, links for places that you can get resources. So if we don't get to your question now, uh, we appreciate you. Definitely come to the D&D Beyond forums or Discord because uh, there are people who can help. And feel uh, free to hit me up on Twitter as well. Yeah. I don't know if that's true for Lauren. That but, is true uh, for Lauren. That is true for Lauren. Yeah. We're on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. We are We are available on, on social medias. Uh, I use Avre and D&D Beyond to run my campaign over Discord. What do you recommend on maps? It is by far the weakest part of my campaign compared to an in-person session. I tried copying and pasting rectangles of the player versions of the maps on D&D Beyond. I'm running Princes of the Apocalypse and it was pitiful. I'm sure it was fine. I'm sure it was not pitiful. Um, maps are, so uh, we've done some sessions about specifically about running D&D online. And there are a plethora of ways that you can do that all the way from theater of the mind to full on using a VTT that's out there. Um, I, I would suggest going to look at those for some of the suggestions, uh, definitely doing some basic copy and pasting, uh, finding a, a VTT. Um, sometimes people, if they're used to playing in person and they're used to having all the physical objects and now you're playing online because of COVID or people have moved or whatever, sometimes just having a phone that you can use as your secondary camera to uh have the display of the map is useful. There are a lot of shows that do stuff like that, including Critical Role. Um, So look into that. I might also suggest thinking about running Theater of the Mind. Maybe you don't need the maps. Maybe everything can just be Theater of the Mind. And there's a lot of resources out there for how to make that happen, even in more complex um, fights that happen. Absolutely. Uh, more questions. Uh, how many session zeros can you run? As many as you need. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like you know, session zero sounds like okay. We we talked at the beginning. We kind of like drew our our hard and soft you know boundaries about stuff. But one thing I've definitely learned. I'll be completely honest. I learned it very much this year. Is checking with your players a lot. Don't hound them, but you need to check in. Because you don't know what that dynamic is. And it's a little bit harder when you're playing on Zoom or live stream because you're not around the table. You don't necessarily get the sense of people's physicality all the way, all the time. And so it's, it's harder to connect in that way and, and to be instinctual um, in knowing what like is going on with your players. So checking in will always help be helpful. You'll learn what they want to be doing more. And uh, if there's a problem around the table, you'll find out. And, you you know, I've been completely blindsided by like chemistry issues or pacing issues or people interrupting each other. And I wasn't aware of it as a DM, you be, but you're aware of it as a player. And because the dungeon master, you as a dungeon master are going to be, again, running pretty hot, trying to think of all these ideas all the time, right? Running this adventure. So t- sometimes you can't observe everything that's happening. And you can't see it from the player's perspective while you're running. That's why you need to check in. Just check in all the time. They're your friends. Yeah. And your friends, like we said at the beginning, want you to be successful and have fun. And so if if there are any issues, you might have some players who just go, ah, this is annoying, but we're mostly having fun. And so I'm just not going to say anything. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you take our advice and start with a one shot, do the check in beforehand, do the, the tiny little session zero about your one shot. And then I say, check in again and say, hey, how did that go? Do you have fun? Do we want to keep on going? Now, if you're going to do the, the longer adventure, our right, we're going to move into a campaign of six or eight episodes, do the session zero at the beginning, get everybody rolling. And then like halfway through uh, at the, maybe at the end of a game and be like, we having fun. Is there anything about this that is annoying? Is there anything that uh, any issues we want to bring up? Is there anything you want more of? Uh, checking in doesn't always mean it's negative response. Often it's positive stuff. It's like that thing that you did, that last monster that we fought, that was super cool. I really love that. Can we do more of that kind of thing? Absolutely. It's not always a problem. It's, it's It can be a, a really good thing. Yeah. So that is time actually uh, for our builds character this week. Thank you, Lauren Urban, our community manager at large. 
uh, at D and D Beyond. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't either, but I'll take it. Sure, community manager uh, at large. I am Ty Kenrick, the creative manager over at D and D Beyond. Thank you so much for watching. I hope these tips were very helpful. Uh, wear a mask, stay safe, and don't forget to love each other. Thank you so much. <laughs>